the angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary, and she, she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it thou art unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and, and dwelt among us. How Mary, for grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Go forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion will we come to know the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the Revatis of Hiri, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. In Toi Volatari Dei, and then Gritivi Gagliu, with Tutum Herum. Iuri Tamede, Sergeant of Tatum, and the Gentle of Sancti, Amen, Homini, and Codoro Sorro. Petrus Deus, voti tu uma in quarta e felicis quali tristis in cielo, tu dici mentitus. E mi te lucem tu rivelitatem tu, ipsem de luce, non ti luce, e non ti montem sanctum tuam in camerata la tua. E in tuoi volatari dei, dei dengoli ti vigai, tu 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 meum. Caute de puti vincitela, Deus Deus meus, quali tristis anima mea, e quale tu giovas me. Spero in Deus, quando me tocca per te, o chini, salutari vultus me, e Deus mos. Gloria, Pate, Figlio, e Spiritu, e Santo, si godera ti principio, e non che sempre, et in secula seculorum. Amen. In tuoi volatari Dei, e Dei in critifica di un tutto meum, audio gloria nostro in nomine Domini, qui fece cenum et terra. Confiti, o Dei Onipotenti, Beate Maria, Santi Vigini, Beate Incari, Angelo, Beate Uarba Christi, Santi Porti, Spetus Paoli, a tu Dei Maria Viani, a tu Santi Bovis Frater, me vota minimis cogitazione, me vota Frater, me o culpa, me o culpa, me o maxima culpa, Ed io prego Beata Maria, mi sento di Gene, mi atmi per Marcangelo, mi atmi per Battista, mi sento di Sposto, mi sento di Paolo, mi atmi per Maria, mi atmi per me, sento di Sposto, mi 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 sento Beato Ioanni Battiste, Santi Sepostoli, Spetro e Paolo, Omnibus Sancti Sedivi Pater, qui è peccato in imis cogitazione, vero ed opere, meo culpa, meo culpa, meo maxima culpa. Ed io prego, Beata Maria, mi sento di genem, Beata Michele Marcangium, Beata Ioanni Battista, Santo Sepostolo, Spetro e Paolo, Omne sancta se te parte, orale pro me, ad dominum Deo nostrum. Miseriato vesti di potenza e usit misfetati vestis, per giù cargo se vita metta nam. Amen. Ugele se me sussione metto in missione, per giù torno a solo tu, per non mi sono di potenza e misericus dominus. Amen. Deus tu conversi su edificati sta, e pezzo e tabito in te, o se di nobis dominus di godiam tua. Et salutare tuum memoris, Domine gaudi ratione meo, et clamo meo sante venia, Dominus obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, orrebus. Ci favi teus exati per frumenti, alleluia, ad epet remeli saturavi teus, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Exultati Deo e adultori nostri, jubilati Deo Iacob, gloria a Patria e Figlio e Spiritu e Santo, si poderati in principio e non che sempre, et in secula seculorum, Amen. Ci bavi Deo se esatti per i frumenti, Alleluia, e dei petri me li saciurravi Deo, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Iri eleison, Iri eleison, Iri eleison, Christa eleison, Christa eleison, Christ, 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 Christ,
Sub sacramentum mirabili passiones tuae memoriam reliquisti, tribu equaesumus, si danos populis et sanguinis tui sacra misteria veneradi, ut redemptionis tuae fructum in nobis iusit et sensamus. Qui vivis alegnas cum eo pati in realitati spiritus sancti deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Ordebus. Deus, qui infermitati nostri atterendam, salutis viam in sanctis tuis exemplum et presidium collocati, da nobis ita beati, culiegmi abatis merita venerarie, cuti iustem excipiamus saufragia et vestigia prosequamur. Deus, qui presentem diem honorabilem nobis in viatzi Iovanis nativitate fecisti, da populis tuis spiritualium gratium gauliorum et omnium fidelium mentes dirige in viam salutis aeterne. Per Domino nostrum, Iaesum Christum, Filium Tuum, qui Deum vivida regna ad unanitati Spiritus Sancti Deus, per Romia secula seculorum. Amen. In ex epistole viati Paoli Apostoli ad Corinthios. Fratres, ego enima cipia Domino quale tradi di Bobis, quoniam Dominus Iesus, in quan nocte tradebatur, recepit panem et gratis a gens fregi letisi. Agivite manucate, hoc et corpus meum comro vobis tradetur, hoc facite in meum tom relationem. Simili tenet calicem vos concenavi dicens, e calis novum testamentum est in meo sanguine, hoc facite quotius cumque vibetis in meum tom relationem. Quotius cumque eni manucabitis panum hunc et calicem vibetis, mortem domini enunciabitis donic veniat, e dacque qui cumque manucaverit panum hunc vel vi, vel vivere et calicem Domini indigne, Deus eri popolis et sanguinis Domini. Provet autem simsum homo, e si te pari iru edat et de calice bibat. Qui eri maducat vivit e indigne, iudicium si viva ducat et vivit, non du iudut canus corpus Domini. Deo gratias. Alleluia, alleluia, carum mea verges cibus, et sanguis meus verges potus, qui maducat mem carnem et vivit mem sanguinem, in me malit in ego in eo. Alleluia! Domino suo viscum, e con spirito tuo, sequenzie santi vengevi, secondo mio quannem, Gloria a ti, Vitamine, in ino tempre di si Gesù surbi su de orum, carum e averies cibus e sanguis meus verries potus, cui manducat meum carnem et vivit meum sanguinem in me mane et ego in ilo, si vumis in me vivens pater et ego vivo prote patrem, et cui manducat me et ipse vive et prote me, e che spagis qui de cielo descendi, non si cui manducat verum patris vestimana et mortuisum, cui manducat hunc panem vivet in eterno. Loves TV Christy. On this ferrier in the octave of Corpus Christi. The epistle is taken from the first letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. 
Brethren, the tradition which I received from the Lord and handed on to you is that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was being betrayed, took bread and gave thanks and broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body given up for you. Do this for a commemoration of me. And so with the cup when supper was ended, this cup, he said, is the New Testament in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it for a commemoration of me. So it is the Lord's death that you are heralding whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup until he comes. And therefore, if anyone eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily, he will be held to account for the Lord's body and blood. A man must examine himself first and then eat of that bread and drink of that cup. He is eating and drinking damnation to himself if he eats and drinks unworthily, not recognising the Lord's body for what it is. And the Holy Gospel today is the continuation of that according to St John. At this time, Jesus said to the Jewish crowd, My flesh is real food, my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives continually in me, and I in him. As I live because of the Father, the living Father who has sent me, so he who eats me will live in his turn because of me. Such is the bread which has come down from heaven. It is not as it was with your fathers who ate manna and died nonetheless. The man who eats this bread will live eternally. How many for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast Mass on this, as we say, the Feria in the Octave of Corpus Christi. So, too, of course, now uh, in the Octave of the Nativity of St. John the Baptist. But today is also the feast day of St. William of Vercelli, uh, Benedictine abbot and hermit, <coughs> born in 1085, so uh, we might say 19 years after William the Conqueror uh, in, of 1066 here in this country. He was born 1085 in Vercelli in northwest Italy uh, and from a very young age uh, displayed a propensity to piety and the religious life. Indeed at the age of 14 he took a, a pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela in Spain there to visit of course the great shrine of the Apostle St. James. He went in penitential rags. Indeed, one account suggests that he even had a salise fashioned for the occasion just to maximise his discomfort and bodily mortification. After that, he determined to make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Now remember, this is in the early 1100s AD. So these types of journeys were... Uh, uh, not easy affairs, not like for us just to simply to drive to an airport and get on a plane or jump on a coach, but these journeys were long and arduous, and certainly a trip to the Holy Land um, was uh, a great endeavour indeed. Uh, just for interest, uh, it used to be that two pilgrimages to Rome counted for one pilgrimage to Jerusalem. However, passing Rome, he got to southern Italy, but there was set upon by robbers and thieves. And sadly, this put him off, or rather dissuaded him, or rather perhaps prevented him from continuing his journey. He decided instead that God must have called him there to preach the gospel, as clearly the gospel was lacking in such a place where robbers and thieves abounded. Therefore, he set himself up as a hermit on Mount... Uh, 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 well, what became uh, Mount Virginie, uh, but originally was uh, dedicated to the uh, uh, Roman pagan god Virgil, uh, the uh, Monte Virgiliano. But uh, there he established a hermitage and began to live a life of prayer and austerity. Gradually, uh, this attracted uh, disciples uh, until things reached a stage where uh, his particular austerity was considered a little too much by his confreres and instead of them leaving he instead left them to found another monastery uh, where he could uh, practice uh, his more austere lifestyle again attracting more disciples uh, and again requiring the need to for found uh, another monastery and this he did he founded something like six monasteries uh, these were built with the uh, uh, providence 
of the great benefaction by his patron, uh, King Roger II of Sicily, who, as he said, was particularly persuaded to the hermit's holiness when a test uh, had been set where a prostitute was sent to the uh, to uh, William, uh, as, uh, who was a, uh, a guest uh, in Salerno, uh, in the uh, king's palace, uh, to uh, test uh, his chastity. He said that uh, William, uh, upon entering the bedchamber and finding the prostitute there, uh, got some hot embers from the fire, uh, put them on the bed, and lay upon them and invited the prostitute to do likewise. She demurred and instead converted to the faith. Thus, with William's uh, integrity intact, uh, King Roger II became his great patron. Indeed, deliberately, apparently, building him a monastery uh, opposite his palace in Salerno so he could keep the holy hermit close by. And William, of course, became a great spiritual advisor to the king. However, it was at Goleto where he founded a double monastery of monks and nuns, although it is said the monastery was predominantly built by the nuns. It was uh, there that he died on the 25th of June uh, in 1142. Now, another uh, wondrous miracle attributed uh, to St. William uh, was that in his early days on uh, Mount Virginie, uh, Virginie he uh, uh, tamed a wild wolf. Indeed, the legend says that uh, a wild wolf had attacked and killed uh, the donkey uh, that William used uh, for various tasks. Uh, so that William castigated the wolf, uh, told him off and told him that for the rest of the day he would have to fulfil the, don the donkey's duties, which apparently the said wolf did. So sometimes you will see William of Echele uh, depicted in iconography with a tamed wolf uh, at his side. There is much uh, there then to take for inspiration from St. William, particularly uh, I note the uh, early vocation. And as I said uh, just a few days ago, it is a great shame that uh, such vocations are so few and far between these days and so often quashed before they've been allowed or encouraged to blossom and bloom. So. Uh, if you think to yourself, what reaction would you uh, make to a young person if they said to you that they had a desire, a deep-seated desire to renounce the world and to enter the religious life? Most of us would speak rather cynically to them. Most of us would probably, by our words, if not by intention, dissuade them from such a course. And this is a great shame and a great impoverishment to the church at large. The average age uh, apparently now of religious vocations is uh, around 30, uh, whereas in times past, of course, it would have been much earlier, indeed more like the late teens. And this means, of course, that sadly so many uh, vocations are lost, or indeed so many vacations have gone through considerable uh, trials and temptations before being uh, able to uh, find the haven of religious life and come to fruition and true bloom. We ought, my brothers and sisters, when the secular society around us is so sexualized, we ought to be trying our very best to protect the innocence of our young people, trying to encourage them to retain their innocence. And indeed, surely we should be encouraging them in this counter-culturalism uh, uh, to seek the refuge and haven of the religious monasteries and convents so that they might realise uh, in the prime of their lives the fulfilment of the life that God desires for them. It is so often sad, I find, uh, in counselling later uh, vocations or mature vocations to discover that often uh, these vocations were given at a very young age. 
but have gone through tortuous years of dissuasion or derogation uh, and, and, and uh, uh, tortuous uh, uh, life stories and faith stories even uh, before being able to be realised. And this is a great shame indeed and always reminds me of the words of our Lord himself, that admonishment, woe betide those who harm the consciences of these little ones. While there is much to be said for an immature soul to go out and experience and be tried and tested in life, at the same time surely we ought to be able to discern the difference between a more mature soul, even though of younger years, that is clearly uh, uh, destined uh, for God's service. The same, of course, is as true of vocations to the priesthood as of the religious life. Perhaps what's most shocking and disappointing these days is how many uh, young men are turned away from the priesthood even by other priests and seminary professors who uh, suggest to them that they would do better uh, and earn more and have a more enjoy uh, and enjoy life more uh, if they didn't go to the seminary, if they didn't offer themselves in sacrifice uh, to the priesthood. So I urge all of you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for vocations and wherever possible encourage, uh, especially young people, to uh, realise their vocations as early as they may. And also, too, of course, to encourage those later in life who perhaps for all sorts of reasons have not been able to explore or discern their vocation earlier in life, encourage those later mature vocations too. As surely those souls uh, desire to realise what God had always intended for them, what God had been calling them to. Of course, with vocational discernment, it's important to remember that we all of us realise God's vocation for us at different times and different stages in our lives. We are not all the same. Indeed, our vocation is an incredibly unique thing. It is a particular calling to an individual, even though such a calling may be realised in common with so many others. And remember that we all of us, as Christians, are called by God to love and union with him in this life and in the next, we are all called to know him, to serve him, and to love him. And the purpose of our Christian lives, and indeed the purpose of the church in her doctrine and in her discipline, is generally to enable every soul to discern and realise and apply God's vocation to their life. Indeed, in many ways, we ought not to so often as we do, only talk about vocation within the context of sacred ministry and religious life. Each and every one of us uh, is called by God, and there are many other vocations in life. Vocations to teaching, to nursing, vocations even to science and research, vocations to art and music. There are all sorts of ways in which God calls Christians and individuals to realise the gifts, talents and abilities that he has given them for his service. And what is his service? But of course the salvation of souls. And when we consider and look with hindsight across history, we see how, in all sorts of ways, vocations towards those particular events have realised and given glory to God and encouraged faith and inspired others in their turn to realise their vocations, their unique vocations from God. When we think of some of the wonderful music that has been composed uh, to glorify God, when we think of some of the wonderful art through the ages depicting the glory of God and the glorious uh, stories of the, of, the, of the divine revelation in scriptures that have inspired souls to seek God and to become and realise oneness with him in their lives. When we think of all the great scholastics, all the great mystics, when we think of all the great innovations in science, which so few realise that for many years was under the patronage of the church. It was the church indeed that uh, uh, preserved 
and passed on knowledge that we have uh, universities and schools today is all down to the patronage of the church and indeed particularly of the Benedictines in this particular period of history and before of William uh, of Vercelli. And how do we discern our vocation? We can only do so by being in constant dialogue and conversation with God. In other words, in prayer. But remember, my brothers and sisters, that prayer is a dialogue. It's a two-way street. It is a conversation with God. It is a spiritual conversation, which is why, indeed, we call it prayer. And though, of course, we pray in order to ask for things, at the same time, too, it is in the stillness and silence of prayer that we may hear God's response. Indeed, we should, my brothers and sisters, find time to pray, even especially, perhaps, when we find it difficult to pray, when perhaps we have no words to speak, when perhaps we can't think of a single thought or retain a single thought in our head, a prayer intention or a request. Even so, if we have a regular discipline of prayer in our lives, we should allow that time of stillness to allow that still small voice of calm to speak to us, to allow the Spirit of God to address us. We all, my brothers and sisters, I hope, practice at least praying morning and evening and before we go to bed. And at those times, indeed, we can use uh, particular offices that have been written by the Church, uh, which are uh, very good, and, and worthwhile, certainly edifying for us and for our souls. But sometimes, and sacred ministers and religious will be uh, as honest as me about this with you and say that sometimes the office can be very dry. But sometimes too, it's at those times when perhaps instead of focusing on the words of the office, we might allow ourselves to sit in silence and contemplation and it is often at those times that suddenly the nearness of God becomes realised by us. It is often then that we receive moments of inspiration, of insight, of theophany, of epiphany. It is often at those times that God speaks to us more clearly and more succinctly than at other times when we can be so occupied or preoccupied with thoughts and intentions, even of a spiritual nature. Every office of the church uh, recited by sacred ministers and, and religious uh, is required uh, of a particular spiritual intention. But sometimes, of course, in the practice of uh, reciting the office and of maintaining a spiritual intention, uh, even then sometimes the mind can wander or the mind indeed cannot be at rest and then of course if the mind is anxious then so is the soul and so often for sacred ministers and religious it is well at that it is as well at those times to simply rest and contemplate and this is wonderful if done in choir because of course there are others around you to continue the prayer and praise of the official prayer and of course one will later uh, uh, recite or read through prayerfully that which uh, one had not offered during the office with others but we all of us I mean to say by this however busy our lives may be should make time to allow God to speak to us we should uh, allow ourselves time to simply be. Allow ourselves time to simply rest in God. Now at the moment, of course, there are all sorts of uh, fashionable uh, uh, practices. Uh, among them, uh, so-called mindfulness or uh, centred prayer. Uh, I suggest you would rather uh, ignore those uh, practices. Why? Because they uh, focus on the internal too much. God is outside of us. God, indeed, we may hear him 
within ourselves, within our inner ear, as it were, within our heart, within our mind. But he speaks to us from the outside. We should not, my brothers and sisters, look inward for our impetus for, or for the uh, ages of our salvation. Rather, continually, we should be opening our minds and our hearts rather than closing them down for an interior reflection. Rather, we should continually be opening them up to receive inspiration from God and from the Holy Spirit. When we sit in prayerful contemplation, it is better to do so with uh, uh, trying indeed to blank our minds, but with the intention of allowing God to enter in, allowing the voice of God to speak to us. And that requires their listening out. We don't listen in, we listen out. Otherwise, of course, uh, the temptation with focusing too much interiorly is that one uh, uh, begins to believe one's own voice, one's own inner voice, as being the voice of God, and all sorts of problems can arise from that. Although we desire, of course, to experience union with God, we desire that to experience that union by reaching out to him and allowing him to come in. Not by trying to discover or find him within ourselves. God is not there. We desire him to be there. And so our prayer and our meditation, our contemplation always should be directed outwards or should be open to be receptive. And as I said yesterday, during this time of this season of octaves, now as we are of course in the octave of Corpus Christi, reminding us of that unique moment of union with God that we may experience in Holy Communion, where God in the sacrament external to us comes to us and we receive him and he becomes one in us. Likewise, during this uh, octave of, Saint, of the Nativity of St. John the Baptist, we remember that we all of us receive a unique vocation and calling. God has called us, as it were, from even before the beginning of time called us into existence. He has purposed us here for a reason. And like St. John, we should apply ourselves, trusting in him, putting our faith in him, expressing such as a form of our love for him, to realise the fulfilment of our lives. And as we go on through this week, we will commemorate St. John and Paul, these wonderful martyrs of the early church, of St. Peter and Paul, these great apostles and pillars of the church, of St. Alban, the first uh, martyr in this country for the faith. And as I said yesterday, remember that these saints were ordinary people like you and I. They were not superhuman beings. They were ordinary human beings, flesh and blood like you and I. But they were able to do extraordinary things because they put their faith and trust in God. They strove continually to put their faith and trust in God. They experienced all the temptations in life that we do. And sanctity, of course, is no guarantor of infallibility, is no guarantor uh, necessarily of whole holiness in this life. The saints who have gone before us, we believe, enjoy the nearness of God now, because in all sorts of ways, uh, they prove themselves holy and worthy of heaven. But remember that they were just ordinary people like us and so too also made mistakes periodically. As came up in a Facebook discussion yesterday, I was tempted, I reminded someone that of course among the saints who made mistakes but still became saints and are acknowledged as saints were my own namesake, St. Jerome, possessed of quite an irascible nature and who could be a, quite a meanie uh, to other people. But even so, uh, he achieved sanctity necessary for heaven. Likewise, remember St. Nicholas of Myra, 
that's great staunch defender of the faith, who even now, even now succumbed uh, to uh, hit Arius in the face uh, in the Great Council in 325. And we can think of other examples of saints throughout the ages who actually in many ways uh, were not the complete saint that we have in our minds when we think of saints. They were ordinary people like us. And indeed there is a saint for each and every one of us whose uh, circumstances and situation in life often mirrors our own. We have gone through the same trials and tribulations, gone through the same experiences and temptations, and yet came through. And so I recommend, as always, my brothers and sisters, read the lives of the saints and be inspired. Yes, okay, sometimes you need to sort of read past the hyperbole, uh, the kind of elevated fashion in which sometimes they are described or their lives are described. But remember that the reason why their memory has come to us is because they proved to their generation that it was possible to strive and manifest a life lived in love and in union with God. And they did so to such an extent that their names and their lives have been remembered since. And of course, all of this can only be achieved by availing ourselves of God's grace, by availing ourselves of the grace guaranteed to us in the sacraments, by allowing ourselves to hear his word and keep it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Corredo in unum deum, Patrem omnipotentem, Fragorum celi et terre, Visibilium omnium et invisibilium, Et in unum dominum Jesum Christum filium de pudicentum, Et ex parte in altamante omnia secula, Deum de Deo lumen de lumine, Deum vero de Deo vero, Geneto non factum causas ansiarem patri, Pequem omnia factus fut, Qui prote nos hobines et prope nostrum salutem, de sceni de ceni, sit incarnatus est de Spiritus Sancto ex Maria Virgine, et homo actus est. Crucifixus ex iam pronomis opansi operatu pausus et sepultus est, et reza rexi tesi et iei secundus scripturas, et de sceni de ceni, sedere et ex iam patris, et in terno venturus est non glori unicari, vivos et mortuos, cuius redim non erit finis. Et in spiritum sanctum dominum et vivificantem, qui ex patri procedi, qui con patri et filio semaladoretur et un glorificatur, qui locutus est per propetas, et unam sanctam catholicam et apostolicam ecclesiam, confitio unum baptismo in remissione peccatorum, et ex specto resurrectione mortu orum, et vitam venturi seculi. Amen. Nominus obiscum et un spirito tuo. Arderus. Facet hod et domini in centum et panes oferum Deo, et in Deo sanctierum Deo suo, et non formi nomen eius. Alleluia.
la secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus obiscum et cum spirito tuo, sosum corda, habemus ad dominum, gracias a damus domino del nostro. Dignum et ius lumen, et veri dignum et ius lumen, tecum et nos divi sempre dubi quae gracias agere, Domine Sancte Pater, non dipotens et terne Deus. Cui appellano incandati verbi mesterium, dove mentis nostri oculis luxore claritatis infulsi, ut un visibili tel tempo gnoscimus per cum in invisibilium an orbem rapiamur. Et ideo quem, et ideo quem angelis et archangelis, controlis et nominationibus, con cui ogni unisse celestis exegitus, e non gloria ai tuoi canimus in ai fine vincentes. Salmus, 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 Domus Deus Sabiota, Clei sul cieli e terra, gloria tua, Osana e Escesis, Benedictus qui venet in nome dei Domini, Osana e Escesis.
Dus ik hoop dat je het hoort. Ernomia secula seculorum. Amen. Ordemus precem de salutaribus morti de vinis rusione formati. Ordemus dice. Pater nostre de quies in cielis, sanctificetum nomen tuum. Veni ad regnum tuum, fiet lontans tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Pater nostrum quadrion de nomis odi, et imita in nomis debita nostra, sicule nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris. Et nelus in lucas in tentazione. Say, Liberal, no, Samaria. Erra mia secula seculorum. Amen. Dice the Domini, sit semper of obiscum. Et con spirito tu. Agnus Dei, ece qui tolit peccatum mundi. Domine non sum dignus, ut in tre subtectum meum, se tantum dic vero et sendabitur anima mea. Domine non sum dignus, ut in tre subtectum meum, se tantum dic vero et sendabitur anima mea. Domine non sum dignus, ut in tre subtectum meum, 
Brothers and sisters watching Mass online and unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that Thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love Thee above all things, and I desire Thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen.
Gautius cumque maducabitis, panem honce calice libetis, mortem donne renunciabitis dorec venia. Ita aque qui cumque maducaverit panem per vive et calice domini indigne, reus eri popovis et salunis domini. Alleluia. In Dominus Fabiscum, et cum spedito tuo. Parlebus. Agnos quaesmus nobre divinitatis tue sempiterne fruizione de fleri, quam preziose corporis et sanguinis tui temporalis percepsio prefigurat, qui vives a regnes cum deo pati in unitati spiritus sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Ordebus. Protega nos Domine, cum tui percepsioni sacramenti beatus, gurielium us abas, pro nobis intercedendo, ute confessationi seus experiamur insignia, redigessionis percipiamus ut suffragia. Summa di Ecclesia tua Deus, fiat si Giovannis Baptiste e generazioni Letiziam, per quem sue rigenerazioni scogniovit autorem, Dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum, Filium tuum, qui in virtus e regna tu nenitati, sui tu sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. In Dominus Obiscum, et cum Spirito Tuo, ite misa eis, Deo gratias. In Nomen Domini Benedictum, ex hoc nunc dusque in secula, auditorium nostrum, in Nomen Domini, qui feci cielo et teram, benedicat vos, omnipotent Deus. Pate, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Dominus Obiscum, et con Spirito Tuo, initium Sancti Evangelii secundum Giovannem. Gloria a Ti, Vito. In principio, et verbum, et verbum, et apodeum, et Deus, et verbum, potelat in principio, et apodeum, Omni vritum factus sunt et simso factum est nilibur factum est. In imso vite erati vite erat lux haumen ulus in de tenebre et luce, et tenebre et non comprehenderum. Fuit homo messus et elco nomen eraci vane, sic venit in testimoni, ut testimoni bebere du lumene, et omnes credus vivum. Non erit in ei lux, et ut testimoni bebere du lumene. Erat lux vera qua luminat haumen haumen et venientem in hubundum. In mundum erati mors previsum factus est mors et non coniogit, in propria venit in sumo luciperum. Corpora autem ceperum deum des forestatim filios e fieri che spifrendi in nomine eus, qui non le sanguinimus ex volontati canis, ex volontati viri e sed ex deo nati sunt. Et verum caro factum est. Et habitavit in nomine vinimus gloria meus gloria quod in genetia patria, plenum grazia e veritatis. Deo gratias.
give you thanks, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, Eternal God, who have deigned to feast us, your sinful and unworthy servants, on the precious body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, not for any merit of ours, but purely because of the condescension of your mercy. We pray that this Holy Communion may not condemn us to punishment, but instead be a saving intercession to win us pardon. May it equip us with the armour of faith and the shield of a good will. Let it be the voiding of all our vices, the extinction of our lust and concupiscence, and make us grow and make grow in us love and patience, humility and obedience, and all the virtues. Let it be a strong defence against the snares of all our enemies, both seen and unseen, the complete stilling of disturbances of our bodies and our souls alike. May it bind us tight to you, the one and true God, and grant us a happy fulfilment in our last hour. We pray, too, that you will be pleased to guide us sinners to that indescribable banquet where you, with your Son and the Holy Spirit, are for your saints true light, fulfilment of all desire, joy never-ending, gladness unsurpassed, and perfect happiness. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Therefore we pray,
Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Oh.